Yeah, as you guys look back on the last game, uh, why do you think you guys got up to such a slow start? Uh, there were a bunch of things in film that we uh, needed to clean up. Um, I think we had a good meeting today and uh, went through a bunch of things we need to do better. So first, we can't let them get to an early start from behind the three-point line, no easy walk-up threes. So, I mean, they hit a bunch of threes in the first half, and obviously did, we did a great job in the second half uh, taking that away. So, yeah. Anything else? No. That's the main thing? Yeah. What's the psychological impact of a game like that where you were down big and ready for the clock to come back versus whether you just got to go out the inside of time? I mean, for us, we always feel like we can win no matter how how uh, many points we are down. So for us, just continue to fight and uh, just stick to what we know and uh, what we do best. For us, I feel like when we get out and run, we're a whole different team. And uh, we did a great job of that in the second half. Uh, got downhill, made plays for others, and then defensively, we were great too. PJ, they hit 18 three-pointers in game one and one. Hit 18 three-pointers in game four and one. How, how do you take that away from them? Like we did in game two and game three, and uh, forcing them to take uh, contested twos. Um, and uh, just not let them get going from beyond the arc. Uh, obviously, they're a great shooting team. So for us, just got to keep them inside of it. I know you haven't been dealing with the injuries as much as some of the other guys. But even from your perspective, the extra day off, how much can that help you, any of these guys, get just that much healthier and more ready for game five? It's great. I mean, it's more time to prepare, more time to uh, get what you need, uh, get treatment, get settled in, get filmed, whatever you need to do to get better and uh, prepare for the next game. I feel like having an extra day is great for us. Does it seem strange? Uh, you're in the Western Conference playoffs, and right now there's no LeBron, no Curry, no Durant. Uh, is the changing of guard happening in front of our uh, in front of our eyes? Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really worried about any of them. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm only worried about the Mavericks. So for us, it's all about us and uh, who's in front of us right now, and that's the Clippers. So, I mean, LeBron, KD, Curry, those are all great players, but not worried about them. But, I mean, the younger teams seem to be kind of making their stamp, including you guys. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, the Mavs are doing good, and that's all I'm focused on. So everybody else is everybody else. How can you guys as a team help Luca be more efficient? Um, Just uh, getting into our spots, get better spacing. I feel like we don't really give him uh, – we haven't really been giving him good outlets and uh, cause him to take uh, some uh, tough shots on multiple guys. So for us, we just have to be in the right spots and give him outlets. This is definitely an outside looking in type of question, but what is it like to be on a team where everyone is able to take accountability and have open and honest conversations? It's great. I mean, those are the best teams, and those are the teams you want to be a part of, um, and those are the teams that obviously play in the playoffs. So for us, I mean, for me, it's, it's great, and I'm just happy I'm here and uh, just try to do my part each and every day. PJ, there's obviously no shortage of motivation, but when PG kind of steals your, your pose, does that add a little extra something, or is this part of the playoffs? No, not at all. I mean, it's just part of the playoffs. I mean, if you do stuff, you got to be able to be able to watch them do it as well. So, I mean, for me, I'm, it's about next game mentality, and uh, I'm just happy to be out there and contribute to my team. PJ, your first two playoff games in the AAC, what was it like to play in front of your home crowd? Great. I mean, the crowd was uh, ecstatic. Uh, I loved every bit of it. I'm excited, and uh, I can't wait to come back for game six. Have you been surprised at the reaction that your pose has gotten over the course of the last three or four days? Yeah, I mean, when I did it, I didn't expect it to be how it is now. But, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, for me, I'm just out there trying to have fun playing basketball and do what I can to help my team. But, yeah, I mean, I d definitely didn't expect it to be this this much. You see any T-shirts yet? Yeah, there were some T-shirts last game. But uh, everybody's been telling me I need to put it on a shirt. But I haven't even been focused on it. So, for me, just trying to go out there and have fun. What's the best reaction that you've got? Somebody reached out to you about is, is there a story that kind of goes along with it that's maybe, maybe the, the funniest piece of it for you? I think it's all funny. I mean, for me, like, my phone's still blowing up about it. And, like, everybody's DMing me, putting me in stories, just mentioning me everywhere. So, for me, I mean, it's just fun. It's just a part of the game for me, and uh, I just love to go out there and show my emotion. What does it mean to have, speaking of the pose, like, your teammates? They just have your back so much on that. What does that mean to you? That uh, means the world to me. I mean, obviously having a group of guys like this and being able to go out there and fight for them, and they fight for me as well. So just uh, for them to be able to have my back is uh, just me just being a happy teammate and uh, just feel good about it. In the spirit of fun, I asked um, Daniel what song, what he thought went with the pose. He said, I believe it's by Boss Man D'Lo. What song comes to mind for you? Uh, Mr. Posh Scraper by Boss Man D'Lo. That's where I got it from, so, yeah. <laughs> you familiar with Run DMC? Yeah, for sure. My parents used to listen to him back in the day, but. Yeah. <laughs>
I think you might have just lost a couple minutes of PT with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fairness, kid opened himself up for that. Yes, he did. <laughs> Thank you. Let's go with the medical. Uh, Luca has a sprained knee. He's probable for tomorrow. Timmy. Uh, just had a setback, uh, so he's going to be reevaluated, um, but he's questionable. And then uh, Omax is out. Timmy had a, a setback during that uh, little stay ready game? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they'll they'll reevaluate him and see how he feels. How much was Luke able to do today? Uh, everything. Okay. Jason, they scored uh, 18 three-pointers in the uh, game one and also 18 in game four. How do you guys run them off the three-point line? Yeah, I think looking at game two uh, and three, um, just being able to understand that three is important uh, for them and we got to do a better job, uh, especially early in the game. How do you guys as coaches and the, and the players as well help make things uh, easier for Luca? Uh, I mean, he always has to work for whatever he gets, but but is there a way that you guys can help him uh, simplify things? Yeah, I, I, well, it's simple now. Um, you got to give. Uh, they're throwing a lot of different bodies at him and and making him work um, and taking the three away or taking the lob away. So uh, for him, he's he's got to look to score a little bit more for us uh, and be aggressive and set the tone early. Jason, it goes without saying the kind of player that Kyrie Irving is in the playoffs, but how special is it to see it with him being a Dallas Maverick? Yeah, I think um, there were questions when we traded for him. I think those have all been answered. Uh, but when you talk about Kai's, uh, he's won a championship. He's won a gold medal. Um, he's, a, he's a winner. And uh, for, it, for us to have him is, is big. And we saw that in game four. Uh, his ability to lead the guys uh, when things weren't going well. We just stayed the course, um, and he kind of led us there by getting us going offensively and just kept us calm. His calmness is uh, one of the big things you need this time of year where you don't panic, and he's one that never panics. He's always figuring out a way to get back in the game or control the game, and that's what you need this time of year. During a, If a team is going to have a long playoff run, uh, often there's kind of a crossroads game, and and that happened to you guys in 2011 uh, with Portland. What do you, you know? Can you use that as maybe a history lesson, or you know, point out to how important it is to bounce back, or you know, kind of galvanize from a tough loss like you guys had the other day? Yeah, I think uh, you learn from your wins, you learn from your losses. And um, game four, we learned. I mean, we fought um, and, and got back into the game, took the lead. Uh, but there were things that led up to that that we can't do, and it was kind of like game one. We had a bad quarter the first quarter, um, but we you can't have bad quarters, um, you know, in, at this time of the year, especially against the Clippers. They're a very good team. And, uh, again, uh, being able to take the threes out. Um, but a lot of times in series, there's swing games. Um, you know, a lot of guys look at three and five as swing games, and so... Uh, we're going on the road. This is a swing game. Uh, the, this, the winner controls the series, and so uh, we got to find a way to win on the road. Coach, we saw Exum during the five on five. Do you see him making more of an impact in the series moving forward? Or? Yeah, yeah. I, I look for Exum. Um, we were hoping that Timmy was going to get back. Um, we'll see how he feels tomorrow. But uh, looking at what Exum, I think he's going to have a big part in, in Game Five. Uh, you know, up to this point, he hasn't been up to his standards, but we we trust that he's going to um, be be really good in game five. Jason, you, every career has its challenges. How do you maintain and stay grounded through the ebbs and flows of being a head coach in the NBA? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you just have to be consistent. And, and um, when you look at telling the truth uh, to your players, uh, even if they don't want to hear it or don't like it, um, being consistent. Uh, with the truth and then being supportive uh, when things aren't going well you got to be there to support them not when things are going good um, it's easy to be supportive but when things aren't going good is being able to be there to help them give them the answers to help them fight through uh, a tough time and and see them uh, bounce back and when you can see them smile you know that they're going in the right direction what did you think of lucas comment the other night after the game he feels like he's letting kyrie down yeah, that's his opinion. Um, he's doing everything he can uh, for his teammates, and so. Uh, but that's his opinion. You got to respect that. Um, 
and so uh, that's that's something that he's not letting anybody down. He's he's playing. Um, you're gonna make some shots. You're gonna miss some shots, and uh, that's just part of basketball. But we believe that when it comes down to it, he's gonna be there to deliver, and, and we got a chance on the road uh, in Game Five tomorrow. When a guy's having that kind of emotion, that kind of thought process, how do you pour into a guy? How do you coach a guy through that kind of feeling and that kind of moment? Uh, you, you move on to game five. Uh, that's okay. as simple as it gets. Jason, you mentioned the, uh, you know, giving the Clippers clean looks at threes as a, as a problem with the slow starts. Offensively, what needs to change coming out of the gate? Yeah, not not just clean looks. They're getting tough looks. They're making tough threes too. So there's not just uh, you know wide open threes. They're 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 also contested threes that they're making that they are capable of making too. These are stars. These are future Hall of Famers. When you talk about Harden and and PG, so um, you know understanding how important the three is for them, we we got to take them off. And, and again, I've said this before. They're not just going to let you. Um, and so. Uh, you gotta live with some that they're gonna make, but uh, again, we can't. You know, seven for ten. That's we gotta do better, um, and we gotta expect that he's not gonna PJ PG is not gonna wait. You know, in game five, he's gonna come out aggressive. So we gotta match that. And then on the offensive end, you know, slow starts typically aren't much of an issue there because Luca tends to light it up in the first quarter. What do you got? What needs to change for you guys? Uh, in the first quarter as opposed to game one, game four? Yeah, I think um, you look at some of the, the bunnies or the open shots that we miss, we normally have made, so hopefully we can make those in game five. Jason, what does it say about the Western Conference when KD and LeBron and Steph between them won one playoff game this year and they all already out? Who's that? KD, LeBron, and Steph Curry. They won one playoff game between them this year and they are already out of the playoffs. What does it say about the West? Tough. West is tough. Um, you look at Denver, they were in a dog fight with the Lakers. The Lakers led at halftime of every game uh, and came up short. Um, it's tough. There's a lot of good teams, not just individual players, but there's a lot of good teams in the Western Conference. Coach, after last game, you said threes killed us, which, which was true for sure. Um, when James Harden is just going to the floater consistently over and over in the fourth quarter, is that something you're prepared to just keep living with? and? Keep trying to take away the three, or will there be an adjustment there? Uh, yeah, we're going to live with that. Um, threes hurt you or, or, or can beat you. Twos in, in this league don't beat you. Uh, gives you an opportunity. We just got to make it tougher on him at the, with the twos. Uh, we can't just ole or give him free layups. Uh, he's too good. Um, so we, ha we have to do a better job on the ball with him. Multiple ties in the series. What's the temperature like in the locker room? Uh, you would have to ask them that. I don't go in the locker room here, so. Um, um, but it's good. The vibe, the energy is good. Um, we know what we have to do, so we'll head, head to L.A. this afternoon and get ready to play them tomorrow. All right. Thank you. Appreciate everybody. it. Thanks. Thanks.